Welcome back to the IE427 Garage, everybody. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's still car oriented, but um, we're going to fix some tools. Alright, so in one of the last videos I alluded to the handle on the equalizer that I use on the engine crane. And here it is. And here is the handle. So the way this handle's worked for, God, I don't know, 15, 18 years, is this bolt right here, and it's just a, a 3 8 by 16, I don't know, inch and a quarter, inch and a half long, threads into here. There's threads inside the handle. And then this goes through this right here. And then this nut doesn't lock it down on this. It actually locks it down onto the handle itself. Well, the threads inside here are just completely, they've, 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 they've just given out. And so the last two or three times that I've, I've gone to use the equalizer, um, the handle starts to come off and then I have to stop and I have to readjust it and tighten the nut back down and now I do keep this indoors I mean it's in the shed so it's not out in the, the weather and I do keep the the threads of the equalizer lubed so that uh, it, it, it's it's it spins really easy I mean you can see it's just you know a finger and it, it'll go and I could actually use it like this if I had to however using the handle makes it a lot easier so after this uh, this last engine pull in the prototype over here, I decided that uh, it was time for a little maintenance on uh, some of the, the shop equipment here. So what I did is I, uh, I went online and I started looking for a handle. And I wanted one that had an internal rotating mechanism. Because I didn't want to rely on the threads inside a, you know, a plastic handle you know, to, uh, uh, to spin. And uh, even though this thing has lasted as many years as it, has, as it has, I just thought, well, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna upgrade it. So I went online and I found one, and uh, I, I ended up with, with one for McMaster car. And I think the part number here, let me see if I can find it. The part number is, uh, 6308K45. It's a tapered, a plastic tapered handle with a revolving grip. And I got one that was 3 8 by 16 with a threaded stud. And the handle is, you know, just over three and a half inches long. So the nice thing about McMaster Car, they're just they're just down the street basically from us. They're uh they're in Santa Fe Springs. So it took one day's worth of shipping for them to get this here. I ordered this on a Monday and it's Tuesday so you know basically overnight I got this thing so let me take it out of the package and uh, I'll show you what it looks like let me see if I can get this with one hand damn Ziploc bags now I'm gonna have to stop hang on all right so here you go here's the two handles I'll put this one back together and you can see how how loose this thing is now I mean just just in my hand it's already in that far and uh, you know it's barely catching thread so we're gonna retire that one here's the new one side-by-side -side comparison now the inside portion of this spins so this spins inside the plastic so now there's no more relying on the the threads inside of here it's simply gonna be tightened down tight onto this now I thought that if these threads weren't long enough meaning if this shoulder portion wasn't long enough I was gonna weld that hole in there shut just enough to rethread that at 3 8 by 16 and then thread this in but it looks as though when I put this through here I've got room for a nut on the back side so I'm gonna grab a nylock locking nut and I'm gonna see if I can't put that thing in and get it tightened down and just have it engage the nylon because 
you can see here there's really nothing to get a wrench on so I've, I'm hoping that the nylon will catch just as it starts to tighten so we'll see hang on let me find a, a, a nylock nut and we'll see if we can't get that thing put together all right so I've got uh, the new handle and uh, it's a little bit sloppy in there butterfingers and I don't know if that nylon is going to attach or not I'm going to grab a wrench and see if we can get that tightened up and if not what I can do is I can uh, just grab a regular nut and I can uh, Yeah, I think I'm going to grab a regular standard nut and I'm going to see if I can't get some uh, some never come off juice on there and get that thing to stay in place. So hang on. All right. I am going to go with the red. I don't ever want this thing to come off and if if it breaks and I have to replace it I can cut it off okay now we're gonna let that uh, thread locker sit and uh, hopefully by tomorrow it'll be all uh, ready to go and uh, I can put this thing back into use all right so we're gonna take this one throw in the garbage and now by tomorrow this should all be ready to go but I wanted to take a moment and talk to you guys about engine lifts now some of you aren't gonna have a choice a lot of you aren't going to have a choice you um, you're going to get into working on automobiles whether it's the factory five cars or whether it's uh, restoring a classic hot rod or maybe pulling the engine on your daily driver because you've you've done blown it up but uh, at some point you may need an engine hoist and the best engine hoist is the one you don't have to pay for Meaning, if you've got a buddy, or you've got a friend, or there's somebody in your local car club that has an engine hoist, borrow one. Um, if you're not going to be working on cars all the time, like we are in the shop here, you probably don't need to buy an engine hoist. Borrow one. At the very least, go on to Craigslist Marketplace, you know, one of those, and buy one used. Because chances are you're only going to use it once. So as long as it works... You're fine. However, if you are going to invest in an engine hoist, make sure it is at least a two-ton engine hoist. Don't be lured into a low price from one of the local uh, discount tool stores and buy a ton or a ton and a half engine hoist. You're going to be sorry. One, they don't have the reach that... Uh, a two-ton engine hoist is going to have and even with a two-ton I'm going to show you how you can get a little bit more reach out of it without without damaging the lift and without putting yourself in danger but um, make sure that you buy at least a two-ton because you're going to need that stability when that thing's out on the edge and because these cars are considered a front engine mid-engine car the engine actually goes in quite a ways so if you don't have that reach, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to get the engine in place. Or you're going to have to come in from the side, which is actually the way you have to pull the motor on one of these cars when the body is on. You can't get it from the front. Some of the other features that I would look for in an engine hoist, if I was buying one that I was going to use a lot, is to make sure that the front wheels are incorporated into the front 
struts. What that's going to do is it's going to give you low profile to fit under a vehicle like that that is pretty low to the ground. This way you're not going to have to put the, the front of the car up on uh, blocks of wood underneath the tires or anything like that in order to get this to go underneath it. Now I got lucky. When I bought this engine hoist probably 30 years ago, I didn't know any of the things that I'm telling you now. I just bought this thing because it was on sale. Um, I found out about this when I started helping other people drop their engines into their projects and we found out we couldn't get their lift underneath the frame of one of the factory five cars. So this is something I would look for. Now I know that the local discount tool house does not have one like this. Their wheels are mounted on the bottom here and that makes this front strut two to three inches higher and it makes it real difficult to actually put the engine in without having the front of the end uh, the front of the car elevated now if you've seen the way I do these cars I elevate the back of the car because then it makes the going in to the engine bay a lot easier you're going straight in versus trying to lift the the, uh, the engine up and then like shoehorn it down in when the back end of the car is up in the air you're basically just going straight in and then once you get it close to in place you raise the transmission up on the back so that's one thing I would look for and then if you want to extend the reach of your engine hoist most of these engine hoists are going to have a bolt or a pin that runs through right here and the chain will actually come out the bottom you can see right here where the chain is kind of exposed on the bottom but I don't have the hook coming out from the bottom I've got the hook coming out from the front and that just get, just gives you two more inches of reach and that may mean the difference between the front of the jack hitting the bumper of the car or not and then one modification that I did on this and you can see the top of the the uh, engine hoist is kind of you know boogered up I actually mounted a, um, a hitch ball a two inch hitch ball in here so over at the other shop we have a, a, a 16 foot open deck trailer and probably about four or five years ago I took the wood wood deck that was on it when I bought it off because it had started to disintegrate and I replaced it with a steel deck and when I started painting the 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 trailer because I wanted to you know grind the paint down where it was chipping and and prime it and paint it I actually Put the uh, hitch ball on the engine hoist and I raised the front of that trailer up in the air so that I could get underneath it to paint it and it made it a lot easier so there's a lot of things that you can use your engine hoist for that you're not even going to realize that you can do until you have one the um, the 80 gallon compressor that's behind the shop I pulled that off of the back of one of our work trucks with that engine hoist I wrapped a sling around the um, the compressor tank we laid it down and I lifted it up out of the back of the work truck and set it on the ground we actually lowered it down onto the front struts of the engine hoist and we used the engine hoist to wheel it back behind the shop where it is now and then we stood it up so you can use this for all kinds of stuff when I bought a rear end for um, Michael's car on on the other end where I bought it I bought it from a guy on marketplace there were plenty of guys there to help me load it in the back of the the the, the work van but when I got home mrs. ie 427 was nowhere to be found and so what I did is I just rigged up a couple of chains around that rear end I grabbed the engine hoist I lifted it out of the back of the van all by myself and I set it you know here in the shop where I could start to rebuild it so there's all kinds of things you can use these engine hoists for so there's all kinds of things you can use an engine hoist for once you have one that you didn't need you know you, you didn't even know you needed one until you didn't have one so if you're gonna invest in one know 
that it's going to be just that. It's going to be an investment. It's going to be something that you're going to use all the time. And if you're not, if you're not one of those do-it-yourself type guys, it's going to be rebuilding stuff all the time. Don't buy one. Borrow one. Um, I think that's going to do it for today. Um, I wanted just to put a quick video together just so that I could obviously show you exactly how to replace that handle with something that's going to be a little bit more reliable than the handle that was on there. Now, don't get me wrong. That, 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 uh, that equalizer I bought at Harbor Freight and it was less than a hundred bucks and it's lasted what, 15, 16, 17 years. I, I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly what year I bought it. And this is the first time I've started having trouble with it. So it's just, you know, it's outlived its usefulness as far as the handle goes. So we've replaced it with something that hopefully will last another 15 or maybe even 30 years. And uh, we'll keep keep using the the, uh, the engine hoist. Um, so anyways, if you guys are enjoying the content here and you like videos like this where I, I give you tool tips or whatever, please do the like, the share, the subscribe. Comment if you'd like. Tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyways we'll see you guys all next time have a great day